Welcome to World. Hi, I'm Ben. If you're new around here, subscribe to the channel, click the like button below. Let's dive in. exactly how to use the landscape to their advantages. They've built part of Hadrian's Wall using the natural landscape here. They've used these big cliffs as a natural defence and just in the distance is the rest of Hadrian's Wall where it goes right along to the shoreline and down below there is where they've used more natural barrier. It seems that they've had surveyors mapping out where the wall is going to go prior to doing it a lot of thought and effort has gone into building this wall a lot more than I initially thought. Why was Hadrian's Wall needed? Well in 81 AD the Romans had a battle with the Caledonians which were from Caledonia which is now Scotland. They killed 30,000 in what was to be a victorious battle but the Empire still couldn't call Caledonia part of the empire. As many of the Caledonians fled the battle, they fled into the hills. Throughout the continuing years, the Caledonians proved to be troublesome for the Romans. They attacked numerous outposts of the empire. So much so that by the time Emperor Hadrian came into power in 117 AD, the Romans had expanded the territory so much so that he now wanted to protect the borders. Roman legions were very proficient builders. They built the roads of the empire and they were also able to build garrison forts during night times when they needed to rest. Legio 6 Victrix, Legio 20 Valeria Victrix and Legio 2 Augusta were all involved in the building of Hadrian's Wall. Historians have concluded that the wall was commenced between 120 AD and 122 AD. 122 is the common perception because that's when Hadrian arrived within Britain but it is thought that the wall was commenced prior to his arrival. It's difficult to give you a precise date but one inscription suggests that the wall was not finished until after 128 AD which is around six years later. Milestone castles were built every Roman mile. Between these mile castles, there were two turrets. We're here at Banks Turret, which is a strategic view of the, of the border. You can see the whole of the countryside can be seen by this turret. And it's a fantastic vantage point that the Romans used. The wall was 15 feet high and it stretched around 73 miles long. Banks turret is not far from Carlisle. This turret we can see here is called Leah Hill turret. The bottom here was occupied by soldiers who enjoyed a few basic home comforts. The floor was made with straw, they had a fire, you could eat food and have a rest within here. Each turret was like a, hut, a mini fort or a mini home and the walls are very very solid. The walls are about two feet thick which would be very very difficult to siege and the turret again has a fantastic overlook of the area surrounding it. Within the mile castles it is thought that there were 16 to 32 Romans that lived within them. Within the turrets it's thought that there was eight Romans within each turret and it was the miles castles job to keep the turrets supplied. Some mile castles were demolished in order to replace them with larger forts, but other mile castles remained. Initially there was thought to have been 80 mile castles, each containing a gate. They were responsible for who they let into Britannia. They also allowed trade, but it allowed the Romans to tax the traders who were entering the gates. 
All this extra tax and revenue meant that the Roman Empire could grow. It's thought in the second plan that Hadrian's Wall had the number of mile castles reduced. It's thought that there was initially 80 mile castles, but this was reduced to as little as 16. But unfortunately, a lot of this has been lost to history. Parts of Hadrian's Wall are very bleak indeed. We were there in summer, but I wouldn't like to imagine it within winter. The Romans initially thought that pants or trousers that the supposed barbarians wore were barbaric. But we can see that the Romans adopted leggings, sheepskin boots and woolen tunics for soldiers positioned on the wall because of the winters being that cold. Upon completion, Hadrian's Wall was a massive 73 miles long in today's measurements. The wall was 3 feet thick and it was 15 feet high. Was, this was not only an imposing structure for the barbarians who approached it, but it was a magnificent eye capturing testament of the Roman Empire and engineership. This is the west gate. There's not much left of the gate today, but you can still see the impressive structure that it once was. You can see the two structures, the foundations that the tower would have stood on. But you can also see there's a ditch that stops people besieging the fort. Within the gate, only people who were of military business were allowed to pass through, and soldiers stood guard 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Granaries were built within the fort between 205 and 208 AD. The Romans had an intricate system in order to build these granaries. They had slits going through the walls which allowed air to flow through them and they had raised floorboards to allow air to travel underneath them. This intricate system allowed food to be kept dry while also fresh. Romans had a stable diet when based at Bird's Old Fort. They ate olives, grapes, apples. They also ate meat, venison and poultry. It was thought that the grapes were grown within Britain. The Frisians were brought in in the third century. This was following many, many civil wars between various Roman emperors. It was known as the crisis of the third century. The Frisians defended the Roman fort and help the Romans defend the Hadrian's Wall. The Frisians were a Germanic tribe and had come over to Britain, effectively employed as mercenaries, working for the Roman army. The commander of the garrison was a wealthy Roman citizen. He was called a tribune and he lived in a praetorium. That L shape there is what we're making out to be his house. Unfortunately, we can't see it today because it's covered by grassland. It was situated quite close to the gate and he was known as a wealthy Roman citizen. And his house consisted of an open air courtyard and private baths. <laughs> Rome's rule of Britain ended in 410 AD. The empire was in turmoil. It was attacked from everywhere. The Huns had dislodged many of the tribes which had forced them to seek refuge in Roman lands. Years of devastation and sacking of provinces had resulted in Britain being left to its own devices. In 410 AD, Honorius drafted the Britons a reply after they'd asked for help. And the Honorius said they must look to their own defences. With these last words, Rome's official ties to Britain were no more. After 410 AD, many parts of the wall were reused. These freshly cut stones were too much of a prize for the Britons and they were reused as other projects. However, in cases like Birdswold Fort, 
The parts of it were seen to be used up until the 16th century. And even in the 18th and 19th century, people still occupied Birdswold Fort. However, in the 19th century, it was a Victorian manor. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Please like and subscribe below. I appreciate that the video has got some wind interference. I'm still using my S9 Plus's microphone. I don't know how successful the channel is going to be, so I don't want to be invested in a camera just as of yet. Um, I'm a very poor university student, so I can't afford expensive things. But if the channel becomes a success, then I'll look at investing in some better quality equipment. But I can only do that with your support, so please like and subscribe to the channel. Please, please click the bell icon for notifications. Thanks very much, and I'll see you in the next one. You've been here with Ben watching World.